Inache and Bach for inviting us to be here today. Uh, we'd like to start by presenting a piece we made for this occasion. Thank you. 
why did we make that piece? Well, I don't know. <laughs> Mark, do you know or why did we make that piece? I, I don't. <coughs> doesn't matter because I don't know it is. <laughs> um, I think that um, I think that uh, we don't know and um, it's important for us at least as artists to um, understand that we don't know what we're doing that we work in uh, complete ignorance we do it's not, not you show up not other artists, but uh, we work in total ignorance. We don't have time to really get involved with mutation, war, uh, post-Cold War orders and things like that. But yet, um, we do find ourselves uh, dealing with these uh, ideas. Um, so the first thing is that um, artists are quite different from other people, I think, in that uh, we work in ignorance. And that's sort of a powerful tool uh, for us. The second thing is that because we know we're, we realize we're ignorant and we don't want to um, impose our any political intent on anyone, uh, we have to find solutions for that when we do deal with seemingly political subjects. Um, so what did we do here? Um, maybe some of you could guess what we did already. Um, we, when we heard that the, the show at Bach was concerning war, um, we decided to um, do a piece concerning war uh, to please our hosts. Um, and, um, but how could we do it? Since we don't know anything about war, I'm sure that uh, our opinions on war are uninteresting to most people. Uh, we decided to use what we do best, which is uh, to make internet art. So we went out onto uh, the internet, we went to Google, and we Googled uh, war, uh, the string of words, war and the Netherlands, to see what came up. And fortunately for you, uh, what you see is what came up. If there had been a lot more, you would have been in trouble because you would have watched a much longer piece. So what's interesting for us there is we were able to take, uh, we really work with uh, concepts. Uh, we're very suspicious of concepts too. Um, so again, we don't know what we're doing, but we, there is a concept behind that piece, and the concept is to go out onto Google and see what there is uh, concerning war and the Netherlands, in English of course, and we apologize for that. Um, so that's the, the second point. The third point, I think, is that um, it follows from the second point, which is that um, although we have been invited to come speak today from South Korea, and there does seem to be an interesting, if not uh, uh, tense, political situation there now, um, we basically ignore that. Uh, we live a happy-go-lucky life where we find it useless to um, worry about those problems. And um, when it comes to mutations, when it comes to post-Cold War order, we don't have time for that. Life is too good in Korea. Uh, we're all having too much fun. And um, the way to get around that is um, to use the tools that we work the best with, which is the internet. So ironically then, Young Hay and I, we realized when we were coming here to speak that um, we're really not influenced by Korean life. We're more influenced by the internet, and we're more influenced by the web. And we wonder if there are other people who are maybe like us. Do you have anything to add to that? You talk too much <laughs> anyway. For somebody who knows the politics or war or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, would like to show uh, another piece. Oh, do you have nothing yeah, to say? Yeah, yeah. I think I have nothing to say. Okay. I said it too much. Okay. Anyway.
So we'd like to show another piece uh, that I, I hope uh, is more entertaining than uh, that piece we just uh, showed. Which one is that? Uh, okay.
So why did we do that? I don't know. Do you, do you know why? I don't know either, but <laughs> a little bit. Um, we were invited to be a show called uh, DMZ Korea. And um, uh, um, I don't know. It, uh, uh, do you know what uh, DMZ is? Well, the, the DMZ stands for Demilitarized Zone. It, it separates North and South, North Korea to South Korea. So the organizer asked, asked for artists, participating, participating artists, to go to, to DMZ to create a piece of work. So we, we decided not to go to DMZ, but we decided to create our own DMZ in a little place, and like a DMZ um, dirty free shop. That's what we did. Um, Thank you. <laughs> well, let's say add something else. Or, you know. I think it, again. Uh, I think it's a, a powerful tool sometimes to um, deal with subjects in art that we know little or nothing about. Um, one of the, uh, I think, one of the major influences on this piece was um, uh, Kafka. And um, it, it's because um, he wrote this book called America, and uh, he never visited America. And instead he decided he would invent his own America. Um, and we felt that since he could do it, that maybe we could do something similar. Uh, relatively speaking. And, um, you know, I know for a fact that in Korea there's this, there's this uh, incredible longing, this, this desire. Uh, the DMZ has existed for, you know, 50 years separating North and South Korea. And then, uh, you know, that desire, there's this incredible desire, but uh, Koreans can't decide what, you know, what the correct way of resolving this desire is. And we feel that in that uh, state of confusion that uh, there are possible alternatives. And one of the alternatives, of course, is to envision a DMZ that is like a certain kind of paradise for Koreans. And a certain kind of paradise for Koreans, in our eyes at least, is like a duty-free zone. Anything else? I don't think that that area is uh, like a paradise when we can see uh, 1.5 million soldiers uh, from South and North Korea yeah, passing into each other. That's why. Well, it is true. There, mm -hmm. uh, Yami mentioned something interesting. There are, it's the most heavily militarized zone mm -hmm. in the world with 1 million uh, North Koreans and 500,000 South Koreans facing each other. And um, you live with that every day in Korea, and you try and go on with uh, life without dealing with it. And so we take it, I guess, if we had to think about it, mm -hmm. if you're not going to deal with it, you can even idealize it and go to a certain extreme, uh, which, which uh, we try to do in that piece. Yeah, I think um, we can show another piece. Uh, um, right. When we hope that is um, right. This this mm -hmm. uh, this next piece. Um, right. This next piece is interesting. Uh, we'd like to thank again uh, Hank Slager and uh, the Apple for commissioning the piece a couple years ago, and um, it ties in with this idea of idealizing a certain lifestyle. Uh, into a way it's of the true one.
was expecting the question, why did we do, do this piece? <laughs> We think that we we are helping um, the dear leader Kim Jong Il, and to to show um, a human face, a human face for North Korea. That's what I. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you know, um, we get a lot of hate mail um, mm -hmm. because of this piece, and we're not sure why, because we're sort of promoting. Love. And uh, we get so much mail from, uh, especially South Koreans, mm -hmm. saying, Why do you hate North Korea so much? And then other South Koreans write and say, Why do you love North Korea so much? <coughs> so it's very confusing. Yeah. Um, but I think Yang is right. We, we're trying to look at North Korea from a different angle, uh, give it some humanity, uh, turn them into real, real people. Um, it, it's a big job, and it's a thankless one, and, and yet we're trying to do it. Are there any questions you would like to pose at this moment? Oh. Yeah, just, just a remark, I remember when I visited you in 2003 in February in Seoul, we had a conversation that had a little bit of a different tune, because you were telling me about your, yeah, um, let me say, um, that you were totally upset because of the Americans that, who had invaded Iraq, and you really felt the inner need to make a response, and hence made a work, which at the time also showed. We changed their opinion on that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's what I wanted to hear, or maybe not. <laughs> there was a, there was an incredible uh, urgency at one time, and um, the result of that urgency though was a different piece. Uh, that was that piece. It's um, too long to show. It's probably a little mm -hmm. too long to show now. I think it's about a ten minute piece, and it's called Operation New Korea, and that piece is on. Um, The beginning of the Third World War, which begins because uh, the Americans attacked North Korea. Uh, and that at the time was much more urgent. And we were quite upset about that. Um, my parents would um, email and ask why we were living in South Korea. Uh, we should leave the country. Um, but times have Things have changed, and uh, things are back to normal. And we no longer care about that in South Korea, and so we're not going to show you the piece. <laughs> Somebody else wants to ask something. This is a very, very small question. Uh, in the first case, um, using Google, it's, has that a, does it have a reason? I mean, the arbitrariness of it to take one I mean, to make Google into sort of the information line? Or is there a thought behind it? There's no, there's no thought behind it. No. Yeah. Um, well, but that's yeah. what's interesting about Google is that um, you know, it is a world. It's a world out there. And as uh, we mentioned, well, we've discussed this a little mm -hmm. between ourselves, that. Um, it's our world, um, and it's much more present and important than, say, the life around us in South Korea. Uh, we spend so much time in front of a computer, and I, I have to admit that uh, that does become our source of information. But it's so much information that... Uh, so much disinformation, too. We no, don't know how to deal with it. Mm -hmm. And so what we decided to do for today is to just present it um, mm -hmm. and not make a negative comment. Of course, we. We try to make it a little more interesting by adding, you know, we, we make some music for it, mm -hmm. and we try and add some rhythm to the text. And it's amazing uh, what that can do for information. But actually, we, we don't really, again, um, we're basically, we did a piece with information from Google because, um, you know, that's
that's our life, for better or for worse. There were two things that were browsing in my mind while you were talking. When you said, why did we do this species that we don't know? It reminded me of, uh, um, of the film that's shown in the exhibition by Jean, by Jean de Fouda in Notre Musique. And I have a little quote here where he argues how balance in the world is created, balance between the world of arts and the world of politics. Um, do writers know what they are talking about? A diplomat asks a writer in uh, um, Godard's film, Notre Musique. Of course not, says the writer. Mm -hmm. And he continues stating conversely, those who act never have the ability to say or think adequately about what they do. Yeah. There was one thing that uh, we maybe can take in the discussion later at the end uh, of uh, the three presentations. The second, second thing, I believe today is uh, the uh, Nobel Prize Award ceremony going on in Sweden. Is it today? Um, and a couple of days ago, uh, Harold Pinter presented uh, his pre-recorded speech mm -hmm. as uh, one of the um, award uh, winners. And he actually wrote a speech for George W. Bush. Oh, I found a quite, uh, a quite nice kind of uh, um, a link to what you just presented. And there's quite something interesting he presents. He says, um, as, as a writer or artist and intellectual, from your point of uh, view or from the field from which you work in, both lies and truth is possible. You have to admit both are relevant for your work. But as a, as a citizen, so he makes a distinction between him being a writer and a citizen. You cannot accept that you don't know what the truth is. And then he goes on, of course, about the notion of uh, Iraq war, and uh, he suggests uh, the uh, court in The Hague to pr prosecute the two biggest criminals in the world, George W. Bush and uh, uh, Tony Blair. But then maybe we can take for into discussion later if you agree and there are no urgent questions at this point. I, I'd just like to make one further comment about what you just said, which is we make a very uh, uh, clear distinction between intellectuals and artists. Uh, we are not intellectuals. We have no um, obligation to reason the way that intellectuals do. That's for us the power of the artist is that uh, we do not make the distinction necessarily between, in our work, between right and wrong. Uh, that's what the Google piece sort of uh, does, is to present that. Whereas intellectuals have a moral and ethical obligation because they do believe that they know the difference between right and wrong, they have a moral obligation to explain themselves and convince us. Uh, we don't. Uh, we're basically irresponsible types. Um, and uh, that's why we do what we do. I wonder whether Sean agrees. <coughs> well, I kind of said that to provoke Sean. <laughs> 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 I, 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 I feel different. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. Thank you for now. For now, I'll offer this floor to Sean Snyder. <laughs> <laughs>